Hey guys, Dave Canterbury at the Pathfinder School. What I'm uh, working on this morning is called a crooked awl or a crook awl. And I've already got one side that's drawn to a point and it's just a piece of rebar. I'm getting ready to draw the other side to a point now. And then we've got some other work we have to do to it because it is meant to be a multifunctional tool that you can use both ends of, bury one end in a handle, and then all holes into things like leather or wood or even barks and things of that nature if you're making containers. Everything about blacksmithing is about being able to build things to be more self-reliant. So we're working on a crooked all today. Stay with me and we'll get right after it. And again, just a piece of rebar. Started out round. It's easier to draw things out by pounding them square than round. But we want this thing square anyway, so that we have four cutting surfaces. Let's get this heated back up. I'm talking too much and hammering too little. Okay, now looking at this, we've got one side drawn out just a little more than the other side as far as how symmetric the piece is. This side's a little shorter than this side. We're going to put our crook in the awl about right here. So I really could draw this side out just a little bit more, but I'm not that concerned about it being absolutely perfect. I'll just adjust my crook down a little bit so that my crook takes up a little bit of this length. Then we're going to finish this off on a grinder and then reheat it and quench it. So I'm pretty good with this. Now we need to heat this middle section up so we can put our crook in our crook all. It's really pretty close to what we're looking for. We want an S that basically becomes a straight. You can see it's a little bit bent off right there. And we can kind of pound that into shape when it's hot. We don't want to do too much to it if it cools down. But we kind of want it to lay flat. It's not quite there. It's close. There we go, that's much better. That's a pretty good crook in that all. Now we need to cool it down, anneal it by not letting it, not dunking it in anything. We don't want to put it in water, quench it. We don't want to quench it in oil. We want to let it naturally cool. That will make it as soft as that metal can possibly be. And we'll be able to work it with a file or a grinder and then heat it up and treat it again after that. So we'll set this dude aside for a little bit. Got a little bit of a crook right there I'm not real happy about. Try to tap it easy without breaking it or cracking it while it's cool. There we go. That's not too bad. Not too bad. Okay, let's cool her down. We've let this thing cool down in the air. So it's pretty well annealed. Now we need to sharpen it. And we're going to use a grinder for that. We could use a mill file and a vise. Just as easy. But to save time, I'm going to use a grinder. OK, 
Okay, so I generally will get myself just a plastic rubber dog bowl type situation with water in it and put it right here beside me when I'm working. It gives me a place to dunk this a little bit while I'm working on it to keep it cooled down. We've already got some bluing going on the tip. Like I said, we're going to heat sheet it again anyway, so it's not going to be a major situation. This is just our initial sharpening before heat treat. We'll come back in and sharpen it again when we're done. Okay, so I started working on the one side of this and I noticed it was a little crooked. I didn't like that. So I went back and heated it back up again and straightened it out. And we'll start over on that side. This side's looking pretty good right here. We just need to get this side taken care of with the grinder. There were lots of awls of this type treated up and down the frontier. It was probably one of the most often traded items by the English to the Indians, especially explorers, because the awl came in so handy for not only repairing moccasins, but again, punching holes in all types of leather. So to recreate something like this that you can use to repair gear is very nostalgic in itself. One of the things I really like about blacksmithing is all of the tools that you can create. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with this. And of course, I haven't ground all the way past the forging marks in some of these areas, and that's fine with me. It's got a really, really sharp edge on it, and you want that so it cuts. Nice sharp points. One side just a little longer than the other, not a big deal. You can wrap that, use it in your hand like this to punch holes and push in. Same thing like that. And you could wrap this bottom portion or you could put a wooden handle on there as well. Either way you wanted to do that. Now we need to heat treat this to make sure that it has got an even heat treat. And we don't want it to be too hard, but we want it to be fairly hard. So we're going to heat it up to a dull orange color and then we're going to quench it in oil. And then we'll have it ready. We get that thing heated up about the way we want it and it's a little less orange on this one side than I'd like to have it but it was orange just a minute ago I had to turn it around inside the forge now I'm going to quench this thing in oil very carefully and gently and that is what our finished product's going to look like we'll do some scraping on it here with a wire brush get the carbon cleaned off of it shine it up and it'll be good to go Okay, so let's talk about sharpening our awl. All I've done is I've taken a piece of wet dry sandpaper and I put it on board. And now I'm going to take that awl and hold it flat. And I've got it on a good flat hard surface. And this will allow me to sharpen all four sides. I can put it on the edge here to get this side. Guys, I appreciate you joining me real quick for this video today on how to make a crooked awl. Pretty simple project, but nonetheless, a tool that you can use for self-reliance. I appreciate your views. I thank you for your support. I thank you for everything you do for me, for my school, my family, affiliates, sponsors, and friends. And I'll be back with another video as soon as I can. Thanks, guys.